Hi everyone, you're listening to the Via Lucci podcast, uncensored and completely unedited discussions about life and everything in it. We hope you enjoy the show. Okay, here we are. Episode here we are. 90, uh, what are we? What, what 95. Episode? 95. Uh, with the wonderful Alex. It's Alexander. Alexander? Either's fine. Alex. It's, that's my full name, but you know, Alexander. I don't so mind as, a, do as an Andrew, I uh, I sympathise with that. Uh, are you <laughs> yeah. an Andy or an Andrew? Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what I yeah. say. You'll call me what you decide. So if somebody yeah. my, bro- you- my brother's a Drew. My brother's name's Andrew, and he likes oh. Drew. Drew. I'm not yeah. cool yeah. enough to co- pull off Drew. <laughs> somebody yeah, tried yeah. to make it happen. They were like, "I'm yeah. going to make it so everyone calls you Drew." They were the only person it lasted about. Yeah, a month. You've got to be Australian yeah. for that. The yeah, English it doesn't so really much, work. Yeah, or a Barrymore. Yes. Yeah, or a Barrymore. So uh, Alex is a rising star in the Felix U production, and he's uh, stepped Whoa. in to uh, um, cover Charles's uh, stomach Charles has finally exploded. Yeah. Charles Whoa. has got a Charles has got a belly ache, and his mum's taking him to the uh, hospital to see if he's oh. all right. I'm the understudy. Yeah, it's it's finally my time to step, step on stage. <laughs> yeah. He's been trying to push Charles up for years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He was, don't, You're like don't, Charles, don't, drink this tea. <laughs> yeah, how do you think he got that stomach bug? <laughs> I mean, yes, we sort Charles. of have to do, uh, walk a delicate line, I would say, because it was something. You know, God forbid, I've got to touch wood now. But if yeah. something happens to Charles, we'll all be like, oh, we were yeah. being joking. Yeah, we'll have to erase yeah. the show. <laughs> and now, <laughs> uh, hang on, what did he say yet? I'm just looking. I don't at know. It. Appendicitis, didn't he say? No. I mean, this is I great. Thought. This is great audio content. Oh, so we got to look after we- Charles. Uh, append. Oh, it was appendicitis. I thought it was less. Yeah, I think he said he thought basically um, for people new to the show or people who haven't, because it hadn't been too bad lately, but certainly the early part of lockdown, he kept having to duck out usually once before we started recording. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe sometimes once a show because his stomach was on fire. Um, he went to, he did the classic man thing of going to the hospital, but not really actually properly doing anything about it. I think one time he went and couldn't be bothered, decided he couldn't be bothered to go in. Um, and then that's it. Yeah. But now Oof. he's finally, nature has decided for him. Because you can, I think from a burst appendicitis, you can die. You get yeah, it's not, I think oh, yeah. it's very, it's less common now, but I think, yes, it can be, if it's not treated, it's, yeah. it can be fatal. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I think essentially you like, eventually your appendix will burst. And if that happens within your body, you're yeah. essentially like getting the like acid, yeah. or, I think, or whatever it's doing all over your other organs. And it's yeah. like horrific. Yeah. There was a, I can't remember the name. There's one of these rock and roll fellas who will be like 60 now. He's doing an interview and he's saying, yeah, I think it might've been appendicitis or burst appendicitis or something. And it was leaking stomach juices, acid into the <laughs> rest of his body. And he said the pain was going from his stomach down his leg. Then he was able to roll onto his side. Then he felt it moving. But it was literally the acid, which is That's serious acid you in your stomach. Uh, yeah. It was actually destroying. And he said, I got to the hospital. And um, he said, I was in so much pain. He said, he, just, he was saying to the doctor, Look, just kill me. Just kill me. There's no way. Yeah, I'm, I'm buggered. Just kill me. Um, oh, my God. But anyway, so I hope you're well, Charles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're listening, Charles. Well, it's a double whammy of uh, when you're in hospital. Because one, it's the sickness. And then the other is being in a hospital. That mm. just that bloody environment, that sterile, just sit there and shut up. We'll get to you. Most after, There's always somebody on the floor who just can't take the sitting on the chair and they have to actually get on the floor rolling around. As um, someone who's had like stomach issues, I think there's always that fear as well that, especially when you're in the hospital and you're waiting, that they won't find anything. You want yeah. just them to say, oh, yeah. like it's just like gastro, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, take yeah. this pill, you're take fine. Pill. Yeah. But, you know, I've done the multiple visits and been like, cool, my stomach hurts. And, they'll, and they sort of go... I guess we can scan you again. And it's yeah. just that, that fear well, it's of that sitting thing there. Of like, you don't never feel like they're ever doing everything they can. And I know they are, but it's just that sort of, well, it might be this, it's probably that, so go away. You go, well, I've only come here because there's been six months of me not put, like putting it off. I'm here because mm. it needs to be solved now. It's not like I've just yeah. popped in for a check. Um, yeah. But it's never like in like Grey's Anatomy or anything where it's like they're like a team of doctors run in and they're like, yeah. we're going to investigate everything yeah. and we're going to do it. Yeah, I want it like Trump. I'm on a helicopter pulling up outside. I want to <laughs> not leave until it's sorted. Like, you're not leaving here until the pain's gone and we know what it is and you're fixed. Not just, well, it might be this. Anyway, go home. and go, What do you mean? I just sat there for seven hours for a, no. I'm talking of um, being in a queue for a few hours. Um, so, yeah, I was in um, uh, Argos today. And I was outside Argos, which again is a double. It's like the hospital situation. I'm in Argos. That's <laughs> half the problem. Um, um, so I was in the queue and it was because it obviously it's just click and collect. And there's like a queue of, I think there was 12 people in front of me and a few behind. Um, and it was raining, like it was raining. So I'm stood there with my hoodie up. 
And there's people are like, it's taken a while for like people to get their things. And you think, well, just give them a code and then give them the thing and go on. It shouldn't take any more than two, three minutes, mm. but it was taking bloody forever. And I'm just there getting soaked. And I don't wear jackets. So I'm the only one there without a jacket. I'm getting soaked. Um, but uh, then it gets Sorry, to just the... to interject, why don't you wear jackets? Oh, I don't know. I just I felt like on behalf of the audience. <laughs> yeah. I don't I imagine really... everyone went, what? I don't I care don't about the weather. Them. Like, it's not, I don't focus on the weather. I just put on what I want and I go out and whatever it is. If I've got a t shirt on, I've got a t shirt on. I don't care about the cold. I don't care about the heat. I'm just wearing whatever I'm wearing and I don't think about anything else. The weather is irrelevant to me. So Fair I enough. just go out with whatever I've got on. <laughs> so um, I was there. And there's about 12 people in front of me. And then it gets to the woman. And I'm it, it's, I'm just going to explain what she looked like. A, f- a big fat chick. Not as big as the sort of cake monster from the other show that we talked about in, um, <laughs> in, the, in the petrol station. But she was big. Um, but she's huge. Uh, three kids with her. Right. Every one of them's getting their own little thing. And I'm looking, thinking, come on, why is this taking so long? And then she starts doing this thing of giving the phone to the kid. Tell the woman what the code is. You thinking <sighs> you do understand that we're, it, it didn't stop raining the whole time I was there. It was raining mm. or drizzling or raining. It was one of the two. And she's going, you, you know, "Tell the lady what you're thinking." You're like a psychopath. Like, how can you not think? There's a queue, a line of ten people, but twelve people behind me, and I'm going here, Johnny, here, Andrew, here, Alex. Here's the here, like, tell the lady. No, not tell the lady. This isn't the right situation for this. It's raining. People are queuing up. It's taking ages. But this thing again of people with kids thinking the world revolves around them. Like, and it's not like they don't care. It's like they're oblivious to anything else. It doesn't matter if it's raining. It doesn't matter if there's a long line of people. You've got four kids or three kids it might have been. And you're trying to, what, teach them? Here, use the phone and tell the lady. And they're giving it back to her. No, here, like this number. And you go, how can you be so socially sort of sociopathic that you don't care there's people behind you? Um, And it was just another, oh, there's another nutter. There's another person who just doesn't care. The world revolves around me and my kids. Everything has to stop. Um, But then, uh, and I was really annoyed about it. But then a a few people um, uh, after, I I was about five people behind a guy um, was like, yeah, yeah, I'm picking it up now. I'm picking it up now. Like to his girlfriend, blah, blah. And then the woman come out and it was, the, uh, he had two people with her and um, they gave him the biggest TV I've ever seen and the smile on his face when he, you know, I mean, it was huge. And the smile on his face when he picked up the TV and walked off. And for a brief moment, I just thought, oh, well done, mate. Like he's, he's well happy with that. Like he might have <laughs> saved up for it for ages. It's Christmas. It's a bloody great big TV. But you know when somebody has a natural smile on their face, I yeah. thought that cheered me Pure up a little joy. bit. Yeah. yeah, I thought, oh, go and enjoy that, mate. I felt like giving him a high five. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just one of those things where you like, you know, you, you shouldn't be surprised that other people are oblivious to anyone else or anyone yeah. else's feelings or situations. And you know that you shouldn't be because you've seen it a billion times. Yeah, but you're but never, you, but you never are. You never, you're always like, I don't understand how they exist because yeah. I'm so mm. conscientious of everyone around me. Yeah. Well, I said the, the last show we did, the one before, where the woman was in a petrol station and she opened up a box of fresh cream cakes in the queue in a petrol station. So she had two people in front of her, or might have even been one. And she handed the guy a box with her one cream cake in it and she was eating it. And there's so many things wrong with that that I think the cake, the fresh cream cake, it's in a queue. You're no more than 20 seconds. But I'm going to have the balls to open that cake, cake, not like a, a, an isotonic drink, I'm going to die, you know, I'm in running gear, maybe you need it, you know, all the thing, you give them so many excuses, and then to hand, the balls you've got to have to just go, yeah, I, I'm desperate for a fresh cream cake in a queue of two people in a petrol station, and I'm going to hand you that one, that is like, that sends it off the charts of like, I don't care about human beings. It is just me. This is a, I'm at home, basically. I don't, I'm acting like I'm at home. Just, if you, I don't know. I always used to think, how much would I have to be paid to do that? Like, if you said like 30 quid, I, thought, I can't, I can't do it. 50, oh God, I don't know if I could, I'm, I'd accept it, but I don't know if I could actually open a cake up and eat it and then go in. I don't oh, know, mate. times are hard. <laughs> yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. Well, yeah, you, I'm at Argos, you, you've realised. <laughs> yeah, <that. exactly. laughs> if I was at Harrods, it's a different matter. But I try to give people like so many benefits of the doubt, but it's just they never seem to surprise. They just don't no. care. Stop trying to impart rules. They do not care that you're there. Um, oh, what's going to say? Talking about not caring, there was somebody on the uh, on the um, show today and they were saying about 
why the uh, um, Trump is just really going to throw everything and everyone under the bus to try and get away with things. He said just in New York, um, the uh, the New York uh, attorney came out mm -hmm. um, and said the day after so and so's inaugurated. They're opening 67 legal cases against Trump. She said, the day after, I'm going to pop open the, I can't remember what she called it. She said, oh, the day so after, oh, well. I think it's the 21st, she said. January, yeah, January, but January I think 21st. that's right. That's, that's yeah, right. She said, yeah. we're immediately opening up 67 legal cases against him. 67, mate. He's, he's, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's going to, he can't, let's talk about this running again. It's, forget that. He's going to be in Russia by then. He cannot spend the rest of his life in jail. Once his power's gone, all that legal team that he's got on tap at the White House go. He's got nothing. All the people are going to flock away from him. The few might straggle on in case he's got power, but he's going to be inundated with law, and he hasn't got that sort of money. Not anymore, no. No, no. All he's got is this weird <clears throat> essence of sort of power around it. But once that's gone, he's gone. Yeah, but I think um, he'll have people, you know, he's so good at sort of spinning things and, and playing, you know, the victim essentially that, you know, I, I take your point that obviously because normally think, oh, rich guy, he can just tie it up in the courts forever and ever, you know, and it takes 10 years. But he's in debt. Even... Remember, he's but, got this 400 million pounds. But he can, get his, he can get his Trump people to be like, oh, they're trying to take, me, you know, they're trying to take me down. The fake, you know, the fake news media and the fake police and the fake prosecutors. Yeah, but and the they, fake these, these are all, this is all Republicans now. Once mm. he's gone, remember he was broke. He's, he's got these. No, I mean his. I mean his his personal fan base. All these. Oh yeah, yeah. but that's not going to change the legal. He's still going to have to. Yeah, but as in they'll give him money. He can offer support them. No, not donate. That sort, you not don't that think so? Yeah. No, maybe not that sort of money though. That's they the will. Thing, like... Yeah, they might have seventy, eighty million if he really digs in. But all the <clears> big <throat> investors, they're gone. He's, yeah. Why would we invest? He's got nothing coming in big, so it's going to be drip, drip. And if you've got sixty-seven legal, that's just out of New York. That is, forget everything else. He can't fight that. He hasn't got the money to fight that. Plus, he's got the legal bills of he's got two debts that are due to be paid once he comes out of office, and one of them's four hundred million, which is to the bank. I don't know if it's uh, I can't remember the name. And the other ones, I think, a hundred million. We've all had like, nights out. Yeah, like his look, his legal <laughs> thing. They run out then. He needs to pay them back then. He's got no money. He cannot raise that sort of money. He can't. Also, he cannot go into court on it. He can't do that. So he cannot spend any time in court he has to throw lawyers in fact all his life is thrown between my um like a delusion he throws lawyers in front of his delusion to sort of keep his little bubble going mm. he hasn't got that sort of money anymore he's not the support isn't going to help him legally it might you know over the years blah blah whatever but that they're coming after him new york are coming after him he's got those big bills that he has to pay he's got nothing and i'm telling you thinking about how russia works they'll say listen mate you know just we'll, we'll help you out because like, they want to use him to destroy from in, the America from inside. So they're going to use him. So they might prop him up. They'll set up his TV channel. They'll fund it. And he'll go, yeah, fine. No worries, mate. And eventually, if it comes to him having to go to court or um, having to go to jail, if they say, look, if you don't come, you're going to go. Russia will say, yeah, mate, listen, come over here and we'll, we'll come on your TV channel over here and spout, tell us everything you know. And he'll I go. Think he, I think it's much more likely, your first point of that, that they would fund him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the only thing, because Russia would say, this is great. We're never going to have this again. We've got literally got a man on the yeah. inside. We can do yeah. what we want with him. And he's going to go down. And the only way to stop him going down is to give him a few quid. Well, I think, and like, it. it's not even, I think, as, like, I suppose as conspiratorial as, like, he's a man on the inside. I think it's just more, he just incites chaos and incites division within America. So yeah. funding him and continuing his spout of, of whatever it is that he's doing, yeah. of far, you know, alt-right politics is probably in their game because it keeps America constantly split. Yeah. It keeps, well, them, you know, that, keeps America the unified. Show. It is literally divide and conquer. Russia yeah. can't fight from the outside. I keep throwing Russia under the bus, but there's a few countries. They can't fight from the outside, so you have to get in and break it up. And you are getting that sort of left thing here. And You've literally got two channels now, the Fox News and everyone else. So it's already happened. Now the states are starting to argue amongst themselves where you've got the right-wing states left. So it's working. And he's he's there uh, fracturing everything. So it's working. So they want to prop him up. Now there's limits to how much they're going to want to prop him up. But I'm telling you, with everything that's coming at him, he's going to have to go to jail. He's going to have to go to jail and he cannot go. He can't even go to court. So forget jail. If it comes to him going to jail, he will, like that, vanish. And there'll be a couple of countries rush up and say, yeah, mate, come over here. Look, just start your channel. We'll pay for you. Yeah, they're all lying. And then... When they've got no use for him, they'll say to him, listen, mate, 
now it's four years later and things aren't working out you know we've got everything you know it's, if, whether, if it's not working or it is working we're gonna have to send you back because they want you back and if you don't we can make you a citizen. You can stay here, but then you got to tell us everything. We want to know who and where and what the codes, and you got to tell us everything. Or you're getting back on the plane, mate, and I'll see you in jail, sort of thing. Um, so see, that's, uh, that's where I think it it does become hard because there is a lot of people online saying and there's a lot of thought being like, ah, oh, he'll like you know, as the presidency's coming to an end, he's not going to swap over with Biden. He's just going to sneak out the back door and he'll do what you say. He'll go to Russia, that kind of thing. But that is such a security risk, like you've just said, that I honestly feel there's probably a good chance that they won't let him. I feel like yeah, the no, Secret Service will follow him out. Yeah, he and definitely he's, won't. Oh, I debate. cameras dropped out. I just did a, a big oh, thumb emoji. Thumbed, I didn't mean yeah. to. I thought you were trying to get rid of point. the... Uh, I, I do agree. Trendy. I do agree. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I, but I honestly do believe that they will. there's no way they're going to let him leave yeah, the country no, you're right. because it's such a security risk. I'm sure they've already got orders being like, no, Pres, you know, former presidents can't just leave and go to other yeah, countries. Yeah, I think. I, I, so my thing, if it if it was to come to that, you, again, you have to think of the Russian perspective. He's definitely not going to walk out and go to Russia. He's going to stay here. It's but there'll be months have passed, weeks have passed, and when it gets to the point where it starts to look like, listen, mate, there's nothing more we can do. That we're getting hit from every side, and nobody, you're going to have to turn up in court, and it's looking like you might spend some time in jail. That's when Russia will say. Yeah, mate, come over here. And maybe, yeah, you're right. He's not going to get on a plane to Russia, but it might be I'm starting a, you know, I'm starting a new company with this thing set up in uh, Saudi Arabia or here or there. And then that's how they'll arrange it. He won't go to Russia. He'll have an yeah. excuse of he'll set up look, because Russia will do all this for him. Listen, we set up a business. You'll say you're going to do it over there. You're going to visit. And then we'll transfer you from that country to that country, from that country over here. That's it. Um, but you would hope, yeah, there's something in place to say. You hope there are those people going, look, outside of all the cameras and all that, we know what might happen here. So let's put that in place. But these people going, let's look forward. And you go, no, they might be that stupid. They might just be going, look, he's out now. Let's go forward with everything. You go, no, there's a bigger play on it. You're supposed to be the smart ones, but there's a world politics playing out here. You must realise that he's the biggest asset Russia has ever had. Do you understand what that is? Um but anyway, I'm sure um, they do. I'm sure yeah. there's like so many conversations going on now, and it's going to be an interesting. It's going to be an interesting yeah. what, six months to see yeah. how the how but it plays out. Hopefully, he just slowly draw atrophies until he's just some bloody idiot ranting on some low level <laughs> channel, and nobody. Yeah, we've heard it, mate. We don't care. You're a nutter now. Um, there's um um, you know, he was talking about Oregon the other day with um the legalization of the hard drugs like mm. LSD. They've legal decriminalized everything, um, and. Uh, I saw another article for Oregon. So it's, it's fast becoming the, the sort of secondary home of the VLUCHE podcast. If you're <laughs> from Oregon, you want to get in touch with the show, it's a VLUCHE podcast at VLUCHE.com. Um, but the Tesla car crashed. Do you see that? The, the no. other thing. So no, yeah, it, I think the battery blew up or something, but then the batteries flew out and blew up people's house, set fire to people's houses. <laughs> Andrew, can God. you, because I'm just throwing random sort of images of things that I was half So sore. what's going to happen is that <laughs> somebody's bike crashed in, <laughs> it's not in Tesla, Glasgow. It's Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or again, uh, talk amongst yourselves. Well, talking about that, I saw in South Australia, um, they, 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 they had to, re Ooh. they went off the, um, quarantine they dropped it or, or maybe a part of it did because there was a man who said he had coronavirus mm -hmm. and they had to go into lockdown and then it came out that he didn't he lied well no it wasn't that he lied about oh, it it, it was okay. the well I'm, I, this is where i'm from so i'm from story? adelaide oh, okay. i'm from south australia yeah oh, right. um so this is like essentially what happened is they like they hadn't had a transmission in like 100 days that it was like oh. australia is almost but clear melbourne really? was bad melbourne got better they came out of lockdown south australia got um like six cases in the space of a day. So, and it got, went higher and higher and everyone was freaking out. They went back into a six day national, like six day national lockdown within 24 hours. Just None of that shit. amount of people just with that. Oh yeah. Six... None of that shit here where they're like, Oh, on Friday of next week, we're going to go into lockdown. They were like, lockdown starts tomorrow. Gyms closed. Hospitality was still open, but capped to a hundred. Right, it was like, yeah, yeah. they, it wasn't as harsh as we have it right now, yeah, but they, yeah. they put a lot of stuff in and it wasn't that it turned out he lied. It's that, he turned. It turned out that this guy had COVID, and he'd said he just bought a pizza from this place. But it turns out he worked there and had done like four shifts. Oh. So what they thought was like a a random community transmission. Right. So as in like was like, oh my god, someone met someone they didn't know and it transferred. It turned out all the people that had it 
they all just worked at the pizza shop oh, together. Oh, just from the one place. Oh, yeah, okay. or it was like you know, like they could they traced it a lot better. So that so we were able to when we found that out, they could come out of lockdown after right, three yeah, days yeah. rather than six oh. because but they just thought from it, that amount of yeah. people, they've kept everything that low. Have they? Was it yeah, higher? Yeah. Was it higher at any point? Like was it once in the thousands? Yeah. No. Oh no, no. Oh, it was like I think Australia. I don't know. I think South Australia at one point had like. 50 at max maybe it might even be 20 we had like such low numbers right uh can i just say there's some buzzing is everybody hearing a little bit of buzzing every now and again there is a bit yeah i'm not sure i don't know who i don't know what it is everyone just wiggle the wire or something but um yeah so if that if you're hearing that i don't think there's something can be cleaned up in post if you're hearing that we apologize for the uh thing um andrew have you looked it up i have have you got the details? I do. I do have the details. What it happened? is um, Oregon, USA. Uh, this was a few days ago. Uh, a gentleman named Dylan, a gentleman, maybe he's playing fast and loose with it. Uh, <laughs> Dylan Milotta was driving his Tesla, uh, apparently uh, over 100 miles per hour, crashed into a couple of trees, uh, which he knocked down, uh, and also sheared a utility pole and smashed into a telephone junction box. I'm not sure what that is. I'm assuming a. Uh, but anyway, it's like, a, it's like the scene out of Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, wait, this car, is, it gets worse. Yeah, he um, uh, so he hit something and then went uh, three hundred feet or one hundred meters. Sorry, yeah, he was doing uh, hundred miles an hour, wasn't he? Yeah, or one hundred sixty-one kilometers for our kilometery friends. Um, he fled the car. I mean, I'm looking at the pictures; it's absolutely wrecked. But he somehow got out unscathed. Uh, however, uh, bits were hurled off into the air. Um, battery cells broke through one house window and landed on the owner's <laughs> lap. <laughs> uh, they also went into another home, you know, flying through the window, uh, smashing through the window, I should say, landing on a bed which caught fire. And listen to this. This is mad. One of the wheels came, I'm uh, reading here from motor1.com. One of the wheels came clean off the car and slammed into pipes supplying a local apartment building oh, with water. On. The pipes were ruptured, and this apparently resulted in severe flooding that damaged some ground floor rooms. Um, yeah, it, it he didn't he put out the he, fire. <laughs> no, yeah, he was yeah, he flooded the house that was on fire. Um, but the uh, the uh, the suspect was high on marijuana. Apparently, I mean, are you high on marijuana or are you low on marijuana? Low on, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah. Either um, one's a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. the, the battery flew out and landed. <laughs> so no. I just laughed. Just I'm like, just imagining like, like it went through like the window. You know when like in old movies where like oh, it's definitely your you mic. know like like a what's it's that? Definitely, yeah, when you speak, it's something to do with your mic. Is it buzzy? Is it only when you speak? But go on, yeah. So. Yeah. You know, in like old movies, you know, you throw a brick with a note attached and it means <laughs> yeah. something, you know, through the, yeah. oh my God, they're attacking us and it means the neighborhood hates us. You're yeah. almost sitting there and this Tesla battery comes through your window. You're like, what does it mean? What are the neighbors trying to say? Yeah, We're not oh, being like, economical. If, if, if you're like a Luddite and you go, who threw this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, if I tell you what, though, what stood out for me from that story was like, the fact the guy walked up, uh, walked off, all that destruction. You go, well, went on for the, for the security system inside the car, like the um, safety protection. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Before that yeah. happened, and you go, well, he got out and just sort of wandered off, whistling. <laughs> you go, well done. Yeah. Like, destroyed a town, but the safety features within the car sort of saved yeah. your life. Did you ever watch the yeah. um, video of, um, oh, who's the Tesla fella? Not, I don't know, he might not be uh, Tesla. Elon Musk. Yeah. Is he Tesla? Was he Lincoln? Yeah, he's Tesla, yeah. Um, he, do you remember the the, 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 the car when they had, they had to throw the boulder through the window to test it? Yeah, and it broke. Alive. <laughs> it just broke. It <laughs> just broke, yeah. It really he needed handled. a sort of... Wah, wah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but you Can't go, oh, you handled worth it well. billions of... Like, isn't your company worth billions? Like, how did that not... I'm assuming you've done it before. Like, yeah. Well, that was the, they said was the problem, was that they'd wanted to check that it worked i.e. that he could throw it yeah so but the problem was in all this testing to be sure they basically damaged the window too much because the idea is you're not meant to throw a brick at it every time yeah but what, um, how much is a window considering you're going live to the world I like know. i i, I thought when i was going to do that you'd have to test it also in the environment that you're going to throw the thing through because this is important we're doing this mm. live to the nations let's make sure that the temperature in here this isn't off so that when you throw it something we haven't thought of it has to be tested to get another car let's test it in here i'm sure you can afford another car and just test it just to make sure because the temperature difference might have made you know they something they haven't figured out yet but to just go you know just weed it in smack it i thought <laughs> oh yeah 
That's technology in a, in a nutshell for me. It's like, well, it'll sort of work till it kills you, but, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a flaw in the system. How many of them Google cars, you've seen those videos of people getting run over who were supposed to be testing them. Like in the early no. days, there's one where there's like three, or no, it's about eight executives in front of the car. And the guy stood in front of it and it's supposed to stop. And it doesn't and it hits him. <laughs> you go, yeah, I'm not being the first one, mate. It's going to have a good 10 years under its belt on the, on the road that I can see. And I'll, you hear somebody died and we sorted that out and then this and that. And when there's no, like the corona, when there's no cases, I'll then go out and, and get in one. But until then, I'm not trusting my life in the car. It's mental. Like, it's proper mental. Unless, I mean, even like with airplanes, you've got a pilot who knows what, you know, crash situations and all that. But I'm not going to be whizzing down the motorway 100 miles an hour and going, well, I'm hoping this is like, there's no f problems here. Like, cause I don't, I can't do anything here. And they've got all these override systems. I don't trust it. I, I need to be holding the wheel. Um, but I don't know. Whether, when, when, when are they supposed to be on the road, all these Google cars or whatever? Are they? No idea. I think quite a long time, I would think. Yeah. It's like the next four years, but it's been the next four years for like, 20 years yeah and i remember watching programs in like 2007 talking about how it was on its way where, yeah. um i think that it, i think they started to roll them out and then there was a death and i think right, that's yeah, kind yeah. of which is like it was going to happen eventually unfortunately and i think that's kind of like hampered the progress and now they're yeah. sort of i think obviously oh you've just building it brain, to a higher actually. standard i remember seeing something about three years ago and uh, no it was, it was listening to a radio show and um uh, they were saying how that, 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 that they've reached a sort of problem that they're not going to be able to get around and they don't know how they're going to fix it. And that is the, the safety features on the car because they have to program in everything telling you what to do when, like in the case of an emergency. But they're going to get stuck in what happens when there's four kids there or an adult male there. Where do I sort of, what? where does the car direct? Do you know what I mean? If you're flying down the motorway when you see a lamppost, don't hit the lamppost. Okay, but what if there's six people on the other side? Which, do you know, that has to be programmed in. It doesn't well, yeah. know what to do. It's and the it's trolley like, problem, isn't it? The trolley problem in philosophy. You know, it's like it's like one of those classic philosophical problems where it's like you're in a tram or a trolley going down oh, the right. tracks yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. and you have, and you have the have choice. Problem, it's going to yeah. hit one person. Yeah. No, it's going to hit five people and you can change the tracks to hit three people. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, do they it? use that in the army, are you, yeah. Three yeah, are people you, are drowning, your friend yeah. or seven kids. So like, who are you going yeah. to save? <laughs> well, that's it. And then you could like you take people out. You're yeah. like, okay, okay, killing three people isn't the same as letting people die. Yeah. But then, of course, what if it's one, your best friend versus five random people yeah, and all yeah. you have to do is pull the lever and it's like... I don't it's, know if it's, those are all those sort of mental gymnastics. I don't know what the... Um, there's never a good answer, is there? You think like because that's why it's philosophy. Doesn't matter what company <laughs> it is, you're never going to go right. We, we want the psychopath. Even if you're in the army, you go. Would I save the kids or the person next to you? you go well. Surely they'd say the person next to you. But then... it's often that I think with a lot of those things, it's often the process behind it. It's also the time you take to make that decision. Oh right, yeah, that I think kind I of thing. Something, yeah. It's not yeah, to do with yeah. because you can't this, win. Yeah. It's the yeah, it you know, might be an indecisive. In Star Trek. It, are you decisive or are you not decisive? Mm. Might be the more important. The the, the, the answer is relevant, irrelevant because they can't actually tell. That's not going to work in a real life situation. So yeah, it might be that. Um, but, but yeah, yeah they're so, cut. Sorry, no, you go. Yeah, they're, they're stuck in this thing of like some who whoever programs it is legally culpable. Then, like whoever does the right, that's what the car's going to do. Right, well then you've just programmed it to kill. That if anything happens yeah. and when people start getting sued, they're going to go. Well, who made the car decide to go left or right? So they're in that sort of weird thing. I don't know. How you get around it because uh, again, well, so we're in a suing culture. So somebody's going to get somebody dies, somebody gets run over, somebody's got to get sued. I suppose the way you get around it for now is you have like essentially how trains get around it in the sense of like, I, I know that this isn't a perfect analogy because people do go on train tracks, but for the most part, train tracks are separate from society. And I imagine it'll get to a point where it's like, okay, motorway, you know, like you drive your car oh, normally, you, mean, right, you get yeah. to the motorway, that becomes a self-driving car. And on the, you know, the three hours north of the, to the UK is a completely yeah. sealed off tunnel or a sealed off road. I mean, you that, could almost, yeah, you, you know, could just have go like... straight. The emergency hard shoulder, which they're getting a right, they're, they're turning everything into smart motorways anyway. But you could just have one lane, which is just all automated cars, so nothing will technically go wrong. You shouldn't be on there. Or <sighs> I think that's how they'll start it. It'll be you get to a place, the car does its thing, but it's not a pedestrian place. There's no yeah, way with civilians. The motorway, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is hard because 
also it, like if you're a, all doing that it's fine yeah it's just program it, but it's people in between that the technology yeah. is the issue and it's uh, people just running and throwing themselves onto the motorway for, <laughs> yeah just to see what the cars would do <laughs> and it's that self-preservation like you said like i would i'd love to trust the computer to do it but no, it's like you yeah. said like if you're in re real life if you're about to hit a lamppost you'd swerve even if you're going to hit someone else unfortunately yeah. that's just how humans are built yeah but do you trust the computer that's going to decide, no, nah, there's two of them and only one of you in the car, so let's just slam you into the lamppost. <laughs> the windscreen goes yeah. down. <laughs> you can program in, do you want to just obliterate yourself or do you want the, the broken arm uh, yeah, exactly. system? No, uh, just kill me. Okay, the window thing goes down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that before um, we, we said previously where the, there was a joke about, um, you said, the, technically said, the best safety mechanism would be to have a six inch spike sticking out of your steering wheel everyone would suddenly start taking driving more seriously if that spike was just facing your chest you'll be creeping around looking around corners yeah. to make sure nobody's there yeah can i go can i go slow down don't break so hard oh, no. <sighs> andrew you go you said you're going for your driving uh lessons one day was it you was it no charles? i think it must be charles have you got your license then yeah i mean i'm driving in oh yeah oh, you sound like a 90 year old <laughs> it's a you know, we don't need to in london do you no, yeah. not really. No, just yeah, yeah, you do. Um, do, you, do oh, oh. Um, so, what, what was the last car you had? I've never owned a car. When did you pass your test? Um, well, fourteen years. Ago. I passed my test and then didn't drive again. Oh, you haven't had one since. No. So, what spurred you on to get your test done? Just like another thing. Uh, you yeah, usually. Well, it's just a thing to do. But all, quite often in media, you often start with runner jobs, which usually means you need to be a driver. But um, I just never had that job, so. I was listening to one of the, um, I said after all the politics things that was going on, I had to clean my palate. So I listened to some of the old XFM uh, Ricky Gervais show days. <laughs> with, um, and um, uh, what's his name? Stephen Merchant. He was on. They said when I was working for the BBC as a runner, they gave him a, um, uh, like a car. He was running people back and forward on production sets. And yeah. he, he, said, he said he was in a petrol station. <laughs> and he, he was so sort of like naive and from the West Country. He said two guys in a van pulled up. And uh, asked him if he wanted some speakers. And he was like, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> and he suddenly, when he got them in the car, and I think he's, 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 he said, I suddenly realised, right, this might not be legit. He said, and I'm in a, I'm in a car with stolen goods. And he was like panicked, because like, he's not used to anything like that. I can't remember no. what he did. Did he just um, dump them on the side of the street? I can't remember. I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he was just so nice. He said at the time, especially when you're from the West Country, what's that? What's that you waving around? I just, I'm just like explaining why I keep duck, uh, ducking out of shot because I need to. My yeah. laptop isn't plugged in, so bear with. I'm carry sure. On, what, carry on. I'm sure what Stephen Murchie actually did was he decided he needed to get rid of them. He went to the next petrol station and then tried yeah, to ask tried some to... other innocent naive guy yeah, from the that, West that Country make, if he wanted some speakers. That would make a good Twilight Zone episode. It turns yeah. out there's a big ring of just people. The, big, <laughs> the time traveling circle, never ending. Yeah. It is funny. Oh. I, I keep bringing this up, but it, 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 that, it makes my heart warm when I listen to some of their shows that are going out live. They weren't podcast days. This is pre-podcast where um, they're just taking it so sort of laissez-faire. Like they're constantly having a go at Ricky Gervais for just like not talking. It's open your mouth when you're speaking, doing a competition and they haven't actually got a competition prize sorted out. So they're sort of rummaging in tests to go, right, there's something here. What about those gloves outside? And you go... God, like this is actually no. going out broadcast. Yeah, we you let this, before... you let people hear this. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, well, I said on the podcast previously while I was listening to it, it was funny to hear. Um, uh, that there was one bit where Carl says, "Wait, what was that noise?" And he goes, "Oh, hang on." And Ricky starts laughing. He says, "Because I've actually got my feet up on the desk." He said, "Some money just fell out of my pocket." And hit the floor. <laughs> he was just not taking it seriously. <laughs> what? He turns up once. He's a um, he's half drunk. And Steve Merchant just gets really pissed off because he's sort of um, he stops stop, stops talking halfway through the sentence like his head, and he's going like, We're, and Steve Merchant's always trying to have a sort of broadcasting career, <laughs> and he's just making sure he's not taking it seriously whatsoever. <laughs> oh, but yeah, as I said on the last show, it's good to uh, hear people have got it worse than yourself. To, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you um do you listen to any Australian channels like podcasting? Now that you here, like that used to or not? No, not. What do you I listen don't. to? What do I listen to? I listen to I'm listening to the um, real fake doctors, real friends podcast at the moment, which is like the like so you know the TV show Scrubs. No, uh, I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a famous comedy um, from like it went round for about eight years back from like 2001 to 2010. Oh. 
and like I, the two main guys from it, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, played best friends on the show, and they've become best friends in real life. Right. And so it's like almost like a rewatch podcast. So it's the two of them talking about their lives and their careers. But then each episode, they'll they'll have watched the episode and oh, they'll like okay, talk right, about yeah, it. Yeah. So like I'm a massive fan of the show. Like it's my favorite TV show of all time. And it's a comedy. And so it's like Scrubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a comedy. It's like a 20 minute sort of sitcom comedy. American. American. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, and yeah, it's just them like chatting about it, and but it's like it's so hilarious because they're what else, funny. What else do you listen to? Um, I'm waiting for the new episode. Like they've just announced, um, my dad wrote a porno, which is like a classic good one. What's um, this? Have you oh, not heard that one? That's no. like one of the biggest UK ones. I think it's actually the biggest worldwide podcast what? or one of them. What's so it called? Like, my dad wrote a porno. Yeah, so it's about um, it's three uh, English people. Yeah. Um, Jamie, James, and Alice, and they, his dad wrote an erotic novel yeah. and showed it to his son. And like, so, you know, he's in his sixties, his dad, um, and it's just terrible. Like, it's just like awkward, and it doesn't make sense anatomically or grammatically. And so he reads it. The son reads it out loud, and the two friends kind of critique it and comment. And it's like hilarious. And they've, how they've much run content about, can you get out of that? Well, they do a chapter each week, and he's done like six books, and so they're like six seasons in. Oh. Hang on, but yeah. what, what's this? Is it about sex or is it just a, it's just a term? It's like, uh, no, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like a, it's like a 50 shades of gray kind of book, but it's just like rubbish. So it's like the main character is called Belinda Blinked and she like, oh, she works in pots and pans as a saleswoman. And it's just like, you know, there's loads of like random business talk when it should be sexy. And then the sexy stuff is really, cr is really cringe. And so like, is it, is it a comedy podcast? Yeah, it's a comedy podcast. And, and they is, like is it real? Like it's not the whole thing isn't like a, a play. No, 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 it's real as far as like, you know. And the, like, his dad yeah. wrote a bloody great big diary that they read from. Well, no, it's just an erotic novel. Like he he like self-published it on Amazon. Oh, it's an like, no actually one, it's the a novel. Real novel. But like no one was reading it because it's just self-published on Amazon and it oh, was okay. rubbish. But he was sort of trying to be a writer and anyway, you know, he is a writer. Bloody um hell. and so they critique it and make fun of it. Like it's like trying massive. to sell that idea. Imagine trying to sell that idea. You go, right, <laughs> you, that just yeah. wouldn't work. But, but it's it's like an international hit, really? and they've got like they've got a HBO special, and they like they what? travelled. I I saw them live in Australia. Like they've done what like three or two worldwide tours now. That is mental. Like that yeah. as an idea on paper, you go, no, nah, no, what do you? Why yeah. don't waste your time on the HBO? Yeah. What are you talking about HBO? Yeah, <laughs> it works so well because even really? if you like. If you listen to it from the first episode, you'll either, you know. Yeah, if you, I was going to say, do you have to listen to it? It's funny from the first episode. There's none of that like, oh, you've got to listen to a season and you might like it. Yeah, if yeah. you love the first episode, yeah, you'll yeah. love all of it. Do you have to, um, is it one of those things you have to read and watch in the timeline or listen to in the timeline? It should probably has to be, doesn't it? You yeah, because it's a one. story, but like it's not a, you just scroll back and start and it's go. So they have like Christmas specials as well. So there's like a Christmas special coming out this year. So I'm excited for that. What was it called? My, My dad. dad wrote a porno. Dad. Yeah, just uh, if you just start from the first episode, you'll just know if you like. Listen it. Then, to one, just as yeah. an homage to you, just as a yeah, yeah, do it. Like, you. Okay. It's, it's like that was like one of the first podcasts I got into. Like, years what about ago. um, uh, what books do you read? What's the last book you read? Oh my god, I read a lot of Star Wars. Oh, you books. do? Oh, Star Wars. Like, yeah, because right, I keep. So what does that like, mean? Star Wars on, but books on Star Wars or Star Wars sort of chapters? Yeah, whatever. Star Wars novels, so like set in the Star Wars universe. Oh, I didn't know. So, and is it? Yeah, is it part of the not Disney? Who was it before? Um, like it is, it's part of the new canon. So oh, it's like since since they rebooted it in like 2014. Oh, so not the old, not the old yeah. Phantom books. Then. Andrew, no. you know we can't see you. Yeah, I don't know what's happened here. My okay. camera's just decided to. Take oh, I really thought off. you were just taking forever to plug <laughs> your charger in. No, 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 I, I plugged I it in and then the camera turned that off. Yeah. Frozen. I literally thought you were just still rummaging. <laughs> yeah, for a second. Um, but no, I run. I um, I write for a Star Wars news site, so I'm oh. a massive Star Wars fanatic. Yeah. Um, but then the last like real book I read <laughs> was um, where the crawdads sing, which was like um. It's like a massive bestseller this year. You'll see it. if you look at a bookstore now. What's the crawdad? A crawdad is like a um. It's I think it's a, it's a type of bug or um right so it's it's like this it's set in America in like um North Carolina and in like the marshlands and it's just about set in the 60s and it was about um just a woman who's like uh, she's like marsh trash so she's like you know like the system has forgotten her her right. parents abandoned her and she sort of raised herself kind of thing and it's just about her life and is she a Trump yeah. support? <laughs> well, it's in the 60s, so, oh, you know, right. not Fair yet. Enough. Yeah, no. It's just um, about, it's good, though. It's good. The, the Star Wars, I always get me Star Wars and the Star, what's the other one? Star Trek. Star Trek. So who's Kirk? Star, Star Trek. Trek. 
Yeah. Yeah. So Star Wars is the one with the, that little sort of, I don't know, said gay, camp robot, the gold thing. Yeah, with C-3PO. And the, yeah, and what's yeah, the little stunts. one next to him? R2-D2. R2-D2. Oh. Um, and is that the one with the bear? Oh, Chewbacca. yeah, Chewbacca. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Did, um, oh, God, I don't know anything about After the, There was three films, weren't there, originally? Yeah, so there was three that and came out. And one of them, Dark, Darth Vader's his dad, he finds out at the end. Mm-hmm. That was the, the, the original three. Yeah. Uh, then there was a gap of what, 20 years, or was there some in between that? Uh, yes, yeah, so there was a gap from like 1983 to 1999, and then they did a prequel yeah. trilogy, and then oh. there was a gap from 2005 to 2008. I remember seeing one of them, but it was too polished. It was just, oh, here we go. It's the same thing, but like now it's not a sort of mongrel as the original. Now we've got all polished sort of LA actors that all look like they do yoga. Um, and I thought, oh, I can't do this. There's no characters here. This is just the same group of type. I oh, will stick one person in who's slightly over 30, and he's like the old one. And everyone else is sort of like 27 years old, could be a model. You know, that, that, and that's the story. I would just blow things, some things up. I, like, I remember liking the old one. It just felt like a, it felt like a world. It was, it felt like human, normal human beings. There's somebody that ain't that good looking. There's somebody who's a right older, and there's somebody a lot younger. Not this. LA school, like everyone's twenty seven, could be a model. Let's just bung them on the screen. I can't. When things start getting perfect, I think I always say that. When when things become too perfect, I find them ugly. Like if you go to the, like um documentaries from like the eighties, it still looked like human beings, like normal human beings, and then everything started to become too perfect. Everyone was too aware of things. The so things were too stylized, and then it just lost that sort of raw thing. Um, but yeah, so I, 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 all the stuff now, everything just seems too perfect. Everything, there's nothing ugly. Nothing's allowed to not be perfect anymore, especially with big money and all that. Every film, it's so lit, it's so well lit, and everything's so perfect. It just go. I just want something a bit more raw, a bit more real. Um, what about Andrew? Where are you? What, are you there? Actually, actually, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Um, why have you frozen in that? I don't know. Is have you turned your camera about? off and on? Uh, I have uh, just, I don't know what's going on with Skype, basically. I mean, honestly, I think we've had this discussion before that Skype's only reason for being is to do video calls, and yet it is awful at doing yeah. video calls. <laughs> well, I, I don't understand why we don't use Zoom. I'm really confused by that. Yeah, oh, that's that's uh, correct. it might uh, be more com- complicated or something. But why did Zoom suddenly, t- nobody mentioned Zoom before? You I think it was just coronavirus. for business, wasn't it, or something, wasn't it? Yeah. But I it's thought it was... Wait, no, 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 no. You, you, you don't want Zoom. I want Zoom. I don't want oh, Zoom. Oh, Theo wants Zoom. Oh, the voice of Karim is, is coming in here. He's so voice of God. So Karim, wait, so Karim does or doesn't want Zoom? Karim wants Zoom. I do Karim. want Zoom. You he do want Zoom. See, that's, what, that's why I was confused by Skype. When, is Zoom when... easier then? Yeah. I think I just had Skype on here already. I think I sort of just went, don't rock, don't <laughs> just rock went the boat. I don't want to but learn anything. <laughs> that's what's happened. Like, I think like the reason Zoom has gone so big is because Zoom has just like oh, been Skype's so crap. user-friendly, whereas Skype like really? should have been the market oh. leader because it used to be back in like 07. Yeah. And then Microsoft bought it out and it kind of just like has slowly deteriorated. Right. It doesn't keep it up on it. All right. Well, the next show we do online will be on Zoom. How about that? Fair enough. <laughs> Give it a go. Hey. Yeah, give us two weeks. <laughs> um, Andrew, what's the last book you've read? Uh, I am currently reading Dickens. the Great Dune trilogy. Oh, so that's that's Dune. So, I'm, uh, so the you've heard of the book Dune? No. Okay. Um, that's well. That's a great episode, everyone. Uh, well, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> a long explanation. I, I've I've heard of it, so. Yeah, so uh, Dune is a book by Frank Herbert. Uh, the first in his long in his series of Dune novels set in the future, um, pre Star Wars. Uh, I can't remember what it was from. It was the sixties, I think. Um, it's often seen, uh, you know, for what Lord of the Rings did in terms of creating essentially the modern fantasy genre. Dune is seen as doing the same for sci-fi and what modern is sci-fi. Dune? So Dune is the nickname of a planet a desert planet called Arrakis. Uh, the plot is very dense, Theo. I don't know if we have time for this. But it's it's a, it, it's a very famous, apparently, but maybe not. Uh, but is but, it, is it cut to cut, is it like a Star wars thing? Yeah, sort of, oh, sort okay. of, yeah. There are, there are elements you go, oh, that's very, that seems very, you know, I mean, the fact that it's a desert planet, you have a boy with special powers, um, you know. It's a lot denser, though. 
Yeah, like, there's a lot, it, lot yeah. more political, a lot more going on. It was considered to some extent like unmakeable as a movie. Mm. Like it was one of those movies that was like, there's so much happening that you oh, could right. never make a good movie out of it. Did they um, make a movie out of it? They made one back in like the 90s that's considered like kind of camp, but like yeah. funny. I think it might like even, it, be, even be older than that, isn't it? Yeah, with it their, maybe. David Lynch. David Lynch, yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to be like good, but not in any way faithful. But there's right. a new one coming out. It was due out this year, but it's been pushed back to next year. Two-parter. It's by an amazing director, and it's going to be. I'm excited for it. Oh right! So they just well, released a new trailer. And could you? Do you think you could watch that without knowing what it is? Oh yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. point. It's the an adaptation oh. of the book. Who were the directors? Do you know? Uh, so David Lynch did the ninety. It was ninety. I just I did a quick Google. It was nineteen eighty four. This is the. This is Denny Villeneuve who directed um, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Arrival. Did Arrival. you see Arrival? Oh, yeah. Such a good movie. Rings a bell. Not it's where the. No, no, no. It's a similar idea to Contact, contact. but it's where aliens arrive and we have to is learn. That the one looks like, um, like, yeah, um, spirals. Yeah, 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 yeah they yeah. write spirals. Like yeah, Rorschach tests. That were yes, aliens yes, Rorschach yeah, tests. yeah. That's Jeremy right. Renner and Amy Adams. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I don't remember what happened at the end. Of, I remember being disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't introduce kids into once that because I know I don't want to hear about the kid, the problem with your kid, or you had a bad parent, or your dad it's a died. I just. Do the bloody film. I can't stand when they interject it with some weird thing. There was another film I watched a while ago. And as soon as the kids turned up, I thought, ah, oh, forget it. The kids aren't going to die. The woman protecting the kids, she's not going to die. There's a guy there. He'll sacrifice himself. And it played out as I thought. I thought, so anytime kids turn up in a film, forget it. Because I know it's too safe now. Nothing bad's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not saying one thing. Bad things There's no kids. way... Like, I don't want to spoil it for people listening. There's no way you thought it was too predictable with what happened in Arrival regarding kids. I can't even remember. That. I just remember. The, the, I can remember the thing. The child of my child was dying. I thought, oh, okay, well, right, we've got to f- go through this now. The, the, but then it was the end. And I remember thinking that wasn't the great payoff. I can't remember what happened. What happened at the end? All right. Should we should we do a spoiler warning then? Should we we'll do a spoiler uh, warning for? No, arrival? I'll tell you what. After the five years, you don't deserve that. There's a, there's a legal <laughs> line where after five <laughs> yeah, years, forget it. You've so, seen it though, Andrew. Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so five, four, three, two, one. That's your spoiler warning. Boom. Go, Go. Alex. So the ending is, and, and correct me, both of you, if you remember, because it has been a couple of years. Um, essentially, because it was like closing the loop. Essentially, so she essentially because she was able to read their language, and it turned out the aliens had come from the future. She then was seeing things in the future, and she saw that her child dies and you thought because you'd seen her really sad at the movies and uh, at the start of the movie and you'd sort of seen flash forwards and back you thought it happened in the past yeah as she turns out it was about to happen so she gets together with jeremy renner and they have a child and but she's known from the very very start because she had those you know because she saw into the future she knew her child would die young from cancer Oh, how did I miss and that? She, and she oh, still see. decided to have, and like, so Jeremy Renner's character, the final, final scene in the movie is her, him asking her if she wants to have a baby. And she oh. says, yes. But before she that, knows. you. But yeah, she knows. And the reason that. How did that, they figure out the future thing? I don't, I must have missed that. She starts, because that's their language, because the aliens are from the future. As yeah. she starts to be able to read it, she starts having more visions because she's like learning their language and their language is like time based. Um, no, I didn't miss that. Yeah, and so that's how she's able to prevent like the nuclear war with the Chinese because she can see the future where oh, the Chinese about... general tells right. her his number. So she call and, and his oh, wife's yeah, final yeah, words. Yeah. So she calls him, tells him, right. oh, and so yeah. and so Jeremy Renner leaves her because she tells him that she knew the child would get like leukemia or whatever it yeah. was, and he leaves because he. Th- thought that was really selfish like to like know that their child would die and still decide to have a child right yeah yeah okay that's a bit more deep than i thought i think this often yeah. happens with me in films now you just <laughs> explained it to me yeah also, <laughs> I, I watched the what's the what's the um the uh, chinese film everyone kept going on about poseidon or something oh. uh, it's, it's based in a house yeah, everyone it won the oscar i think it won the oscar oh, oh um, parasite uh, parasite parasite yeah. um that that was built. What did you think of that? I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I really. I thought but it was amazing. Going about this amazing twist, and I thought, well, it wasn't amazing. I wouldn't say there was a twist. It wasn't worth film. the subtitles. <laughs> it wasn't oh. worth all the effort to get to the end. <laughs> Not for me, at least. See, I I thought it was a very very well done film. I really liked it. I don't mind subtitles. Like I I, I sometimes yeah. I find it quite engaging, and I I thought it was a beautiful film and amazing. And um, um it felt it Bong, good Bong to Joon, watch. 
Oh, I don't know. Who? Bong Joon-ho, I think. Bong yeah. Joon-ho. Sorry, it, you go on. No, yeah, it, it no, felt, no, I was agreeing. It with did. It. <laughs> it did feel like a well put together film, yeah. even though I didn't know why. But it's just, I think people built it up too much. Our, our um, film uh, uh, guy John, he kept going on about it. Uh, well, I kept telling him to go on about it. Uh, so by the time it came to me watching, I was expecting some big twist. Um, but no, I'm from I don't the think world it's of watching. As a twist. I don't no, think is it's it built as a kind of twist film. No, oh, I heard it was. It. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I've, been, I've spent years watching uh, Twilight Zone, mate. So a twist has to be a twist. It has to be a very childish. <laughs> there you go. The, yeah. twist. <laughs> the music has to play and it has to yeah. be like. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I need the. It's a cookbook. <laughs> I need that sort of like that. I'm at that level. <laughs> <laughs> How comes that show hasn't come back? What was it called? What's the two of them? Twi- Out Limits and Twilight Zone. Out Limits and Twilight Zone. They're great. Yeah. They're great half hour shows. Twilight Zone came back last year or year before. Yeah, no, it's Jordan Peele. Let's Jordan Peele did again. one, yeah. Who, who's Jordan Peele? Uh, like Key and Peele, the comedy duo. Yeah. He did that film Get Out and Us. Oh, I didn't um, see that. I'm trying to remember what else he's did. Uh, Us? No, I haven't seen any of them. Um, uh, Get Out. Was that the one with the black kid? Get Out, something like that? Get Out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, we don't want to do this. The spoiler, okay, spoiler, five, four, three, two, one. With Get Out, it's that um, uh, this young woman, she basically go uh, has relationships with black men to kind of lure them, where uh, she brings them to meet her parents. Her mother is this weird hypnotist who basically takes over these people and um, does mean, this weird over? technique. It takes over their mind, you know, uses like hypnosis cult. to take them over. Kind, uh, well... Um, she basically forces their their consciousness to kind of lock itself away. And then her husband is this weird surgeon and he basically brain splants dying old white people into what? these young virile black people's bodies. Such a good film. It's, it's a sort of brain weird... Brain transplants. Yeah, but kind of brain... You know, it's not entirely clear the science of it. Right. It was all weird. Um, uh, so black it, people yeah. have been held captive and yeah, they've, they've, got, yeah. they've got white people's brains in them. Essentially, Basically, yeah. 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 Like it's a way, like, old white brain? people bid on the black person to be, like, because they're dying, to be to put sort of stay alive and, and stay alive, yeah. But why is there the race? Why did they go for black people? Why not just any people? Um, I think in the film they sort of make the... I can't remember, actually, why th- this... Th- surely th- that would be... I think it's that, a racism thing. It is a racism thing. I think it's probably also a commentary on subjugation of black people in history. Right, yeah. Throughout yeah. history. Okay. But I also think in the film, I think they maybe bill it as being like... Because black, black people essentially are quite fit and it being just like a... They, they, they yeah, have, but then you've, they, you've got the fact that you're black in a racist country. I mean, I don't... I, I but mean, they, all, they sort of all live in this kind of very cloistered community. Like so... We're, yeah, so everyone, so even though it doesn't look like it's just like a small town. Yeah. So I suppose the the idea is the price is you don't get to leave, right. but everyone is the, you know, so the housekeeper is actually their grandmother or something. Uh, you know, it's, it's that. Yeah. He, um, what was the film? Oh, M. Night Shalama, whatever his name is. Yeah. Um, the one where they're, they're, they're actually living in the olden times, but it's not. The village. Oh, uh, the yeah. village. I like that. And everyone slagged it off. It's quite a fun yeah. little ending. I've never seen that movie. I just know the twist. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you didn't get the spoiler 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 anywhere. Uh, yeah, no, but I'd already. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not. But I like that. That was a good idea. Um, but what happened to him? Where's he, what's he been doing? Uh, he's he's carrying on. Out. Yeah. No, yeah. what's the last film he did? Glass. Uh, he did Glass, yeah. Yeah. That was last year. Oh, yeah. Year that was before, a, I think. No, yeah. that was a few years ago. No, I saw I that. It was, that was Split. Um, what night? What was the one with three of them at the end in prison? Yeah, that's glass. That's glass. But surely glass. that wasn't the last film we did. That was a while ago. What uh, year was that, Andrew? Uh, that was 2019. Oh, what? Right. Split was, just... was 2017. Oh. I mean, the longest gap uh, is sort of three years, and that was after the last end. Air, uh, that was the gap between. I think I must have the last lost. Airbender I, and after. I saw, I saw yeah. that in the cinema. Well, what was the one where the the world attacks the people? Oh, the oh, happening. I mean, that's that was just laughable. I mean, people yeah, always laugh at that. What happened there? Like, was he trying to do something that I missed, or like, it was just a bad film? It's it? awful. He sort of had a bit of a weird career because he was sort of massive with yeah. signs and with yeah. um, Sixth Sense, and oh, then he sort of on, everything yeah. he did was a bit like rubbish. And now he's sort of last few films have been quite good. What's what's he up to now? Does it say anything? I like him as a director. Uh, he's, got... he's a film called Old in post production, according to Wikipedia. And what what's that about? Does it say? 
Uh, no. Does it say twist anywhere? Well, I'm sure That's it's all I'm looking yeah, for. I'm sure it's, People yeah. sort of expect a twist, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the twist meister. The twist meister. He's the twist, the twist meister general. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's what's happening with cinema then? Like what what what's going on? They're not making films. They are making films. The cinemas aren't open, are they? No, no, of course no. not. Oh, yeah. They're sort of making. I don't know. You know, some stuff's getting pushed back. Some stuff's not. Wonder Woman two announced today. I think the director announced that like they they've decided because they've pushed it back about five times now, and they've decided nope, it's going to open in cinemas in December. And where you can see it, you can see it. And if you can't, in America at least, it's going to HBO Max and you can stream oh. it, which oh, I was really yeah, yeah. I was disappointed by because I love the cinema. So Especially I hate that sort of film. That's a yeah, cinema film. That's, that's a cinema a film. film. And it yeah. sucks that that's what's happening is more and more of these, that, you know, the studios are pushing these things back, but eventually it's just not, it's not good for money to keep pushing right. them back. So then they just put them on streaming services. But I thought that their director for the Joker, he's good. I liked him. Is it the Joker? The last yeah, Joker Todd film? Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips. Yeah, I listened to an ad, an advert, um, uh, an interview with him. I think it was on. He's speaking to Michael Moore, or something like that. But he was just explaining the film, especially how hard it was to get. Like to get the. In, he said basically because oh, what did he do that he had he had millions billions invested. There was three films. Hangover. Uh, Hangover. Yeah. Yeah. He said. Trust me, if it being in Hollywood, he said, if it wasn't for those three films that I just made, there was no way in hell I would have got that made. Couldn't try and explain it to people. Um, he said it's only because I had all that investment with them, like that they said, okay, remake this thing with no special effects, call it the Joker, and just have this low budget film. They said if it weren't for that, the film would never have got made. But it's really interesting to um, um, listen to the interview. If anyone can listen to the interviews with him and Michael Moore. Um, when he explains the film and the meanings behind it and what it all represents, I thought it was really interesting. Um, yeah, so the, what, who was the guy that played him? The Joker. Joaquin uh, Phoenix. Yeah. yeah, I don't usually like him, but he was good in that film. I can't remember what happened at the end now. What happened at the end? He shot Robert De Niro, didn't he? <laughs> Do you just fall asleep at the end of yeah. every film? I'm busy, mate. As soon as the film ends, I'm off. I'm doing something else. <laughs> yeah, but you still, you still witnessed it. <laughs> No, nah, memory is for me looking forward. I don't have memory. I only have future visions. Right. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, if it's so, gone, it's gone. There's no okay, need. Uh, again, spoiler alert, 54321. So he kills... Um, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Uh, at the same time, this incites a sort of wider riot. This got almost like a Joker movement, we might call it. Um, people protesting the streets. This also leads to the death of... Thomas and Martha Wayne because they're killed by rioters. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. So it's not so much that um, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker character kills them or incites people to kill them. It just happens as an act of, you know, because they're rich people. Some, you know, so just a random it, person getting their own Batman, Batman thing. Because I remember um, Charles was saying, look, it, they're leaving open as maybe the real Joker actually just copied his look. He's not yeah. the Joker. Yeah, but that's then what if they he kills of... Fat Wayne or whatever his name. No, is. he d he doesn't kill. Um, I mean, but uh, the Joker never killed uh, Martha and Thomas Wayne until they put that in the 1989 Batman film. It was, um, I think, for the longest time, it was uh, Joe Chill, just some random, um, Thug. you know, druggy, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, I think yeah. It was the idea. He was just he was literally just trying to mug them. Yeah. there wasn't anything about it. What was the uh, What's the last film you saw at the cinema, Andrew? Um. It might have been Parasite. I can't actually. Oh, no, I, no, actually, that can't be right. Um, I'm trying to. I can't remember. Is what about you, Alex? What's the last film you've seen? I actually got to see Tenet a few weeks ago, just before we went back into lockdown. I was lucky what enough. Was it? Tenet, you know the new um, Christopher Nolan film, like the really really big Tenet release. Tenet or Tenor. Tenet. T E N E T. What what does that what does that mean? Is that a computer or something? Uh, no, it's not a real word. It's a word for the thing. Oh, um, yeah. I can't remember what it means. It's like the. The process of time going backwards and forwards, I think, something like oh, that. Okay. The film it's, was... um, it's a palindrome, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was trying to think of that. I was yeah. funny to say that. I was in the car the other day and I thought, I can't think of what another palindrome is. <laughs> I know there's a few words. What's another one? What do you mean? Uh, like you examples of palindromes? Yeah. Well, I can't think. Uh, of, I can't, See, now, you, now that you tested me, I can't remember, but I'll Google some. Oh, yeah, Hannah, that works. Go on, go on. there's going to be loads um, in there. Is it, because oh. there's things to do it can be phrases as well um, yeah so civic kayak yeah. level noon level oh, race okay. car radar uh, Ray rotator Ray. rotor sagas okay. solos stats tenet and wow 
<laughs> and awesome wow. examples. Just wow. Uh, yes, wow. Oh, you'll wow like one. this one. Uh, a multiple word palindromes. My word palindrome. Go on. My gym. Yeah. You like, like that one? Uh, there's top spot. Top. Hang on. S- top spot. Spot. Yeah, you know, as in spot, top spot, you know, t- top on. position within S-P-O-T. within the charts. Um, you've Hang got on, no. How can spot be a palindrome backwards? That's top, top spot. spot. Oh, literally, I see what you mean. Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no lemon, no melon is one. <laughs> I should get off this. This isn't the group. This is <laughs> it's just frying your brain. Because yeah. 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 I have to keep sort of picturing it and heading trying to go back. I was like, this isn't good radio. Well, it's not good <laughs> podcast, it? <laughs> good radio. Yeah, you're like, is this, quali- is this quality content for the listeners? <laughs> I mean, guys, List- that, that ship sailed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, about um, a year ago. <laughs> what, what are you listening to, Andrew? What podcast are you listen to? Uh, so, um, what have I been listening to? Um, I listen to quite a few BBC ones for oh, sort of history and, and science. So, oh, okay. uh, in our time, uh, oh, yeah, which I do enjoy. Um, I listen to quite a few with Kevin Smith. Um, uh, isn't he a was, director? Kevin yeah, he's a director. Yeah, all those people. Everything imagine. really, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, there is a Czech guy called uh, Ralph Garman. I listen to his. He has a daily podcast. Uh, called the rate uh the way uh monday to friday uh called the ralph report um that sounds so, like yeah. it's just him is that just him in the show no that's him and a co-host and then they oh. do have other you know sort of guest people they when the show started he had more regular um interview uh segments so uh he'd usually do slice up the interview and do you know five minute chunks at the end of each episode Oh, and then, there, uh, there is there's a few sort of channel YouTube podcast things online where it's mm. just one bloke like that. Anything it just seems very ugly to me when it's just one bloke standing to the camera saying his opinion. That's something that's just like egotistical. Or he uh, he started alone. Ralph uh, started his podcast alone, and he he very quickly realised he was like, I can't do this alone. I haven't got anyone to talk to. I feel like yeah. I'm talking. The energy's all wrong. Yeah, I feel like I'm just talking go, into the wind. You should yeah. soon realise I can't do this all the time. This mm. isn't right. This is me just talk. Like there's got to be a there has to be a level of narcissism in there that I actually like just listening to the sound of my own voice to keep that up as like that's your business model with me talking into a camera. There's got to be a lack of self awareness there that says look, I'm just going to keep talking into a camera. I suppose it depends what your content is. Like if you're like if you've got a story or you've got something you need to get out, that's different. If you're doing like a narrative, yeah, but that's what podcast. I mean. Though. Even though that sh- that shouldn't last, I could have a very important topic I want to talk out or two or three or whatever. But to have that all the time, mm. you go no. The, you, there has to be a level of narcissism. You've got to enjoy hearing yourself there. I think it depends on if you're doing like what kind of podcast you're doing. If you're doing like this kind of, if you're like just discussing your opinion, I think that's like yeah. It's like what are you doing? You need someone to to yeah. rebound off of otherwise you're just talking to the void but i think like a lot yeah, of people maybe do like you're reporting on something or you're well, talking yeah. about the world maybe there's a lot of like investigative journalism ones that are just one person and it's more i think for narration's sake than it is for that right it's a narration um, yeah that's right like yeah. revisionist history i don't know if you've ever right. seen that that or heard that sorry that podcast is narrated by one guy for about 45 minutes to an hour but it's yeah that's that's different but if you're just giving your opinion which yeah. seen, that's that yeah you're right then if you're narrating something that's completely different because you're explaining something else but just to say hey here's me listen to me talk about stuff yeah that seems odd that seems really odd <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably not mentally healthy either like surely you need somebody to sort of tap you into shape that's part of being a human being to have if your business model is me talking into a camera something's got to happen to your brain there or it's already happened for you to be able to do that you end up like that guy on them um, what's the the 2020 is it 2020 was that the end of the, fi- the film 2020 the, no what was the sure. film 20 with all the meteorites in the end of the world 20 2012. 2012. Oh, no, yeah. 2012. Yeah. This just who, feels like the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> who, who's the guy that played the fella in Cheers that's in it? The young fella. But he's not young now. Woody Harrelson? Woody Harrelson, yeah. You know he's got that radio show in his shack. And he's just shacking. It's the end of the world. Like he's just. It feels like you'd just end up there. You'd end up in a caravan somewhere just talking. Yeah. I've just talked to this camera all my life. That's all that matters. I love how yeah. Cheers is your go-to for Woody Harrelson. Like. Yeah. Uh, there's a big gap. <laughs> I mean, We're always with of, the current reference. Yeah, exactly. Like... You'll, you'll realise a lot of my references take me up to about 12 years old. And then there's a big gap where I vanish. <laughs> and then I come back about eight come or back. nine years ago. Slowly I sort of come back. Oh. Um, Oh, anyway. Uh, so there you go. That's the show. That's the episode. Uh, what, what did you say, Andrew? 95. <laughs> 95. That's episode 95.
I told you, remember, I don't even go back an hour. <laughs> um, so that's episode 95. So, Alex, how did you feel? That was a nice little show there. It was lots of fun. Thank nice. you for having have you, me. Have you done um, an, um, your own podcast before? I know you've done stuff with podcasting. Yeah, yeah, I've done like, like um, a movie news podcast, which I currently do at the moment with some other but guys you, who I write with. Are you actually oh, what's it called? It? What's it called? We'll give it a shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the Movie News Network podcast. It's on Spotify you, and all the places you can find podcasts. I thought you were just a writer for that. No, I do everything. Like, oh, you like, host on it? Yeah, host on it, present on it as well. So, what, so you have a website as well? Sorry, Theo. You have a website um, as well? We'll shout that out well. Yeah, so it's movienewsnet.com. So we're like, um, it's, a, it's a news site, but we're the podcast of that news site, if that makes oh, sense. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, that does, yeah. Movie, um, so it's, movienews.net. Isn't no, that one uh, the... oh, That's a good point, actually. I'm trying to... <laughs> Oh, you've uh, come to the right place, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Let me just no, check my no, own. I was right. It's movienewsnet.com. Okay, is um is that the, I sure I must have listened to it. Was it um you, there's a guy from America or something you speak to? Yeah, yeah. they're both Americans. Oh, they're both yeah. Americans. And who's the third person then? Another a writer, another American. Right. Yeah, I remember when we first spoke and you were telling me about a writer for the podcast. I'm thinking, oh, that sounds like too much work. <laughs> what do you mean a writer yeah. for the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have like yeah, we like write out like because we, we have a script and we talk about like oh, new, no, news, news, no. what news no. has been out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not for me. Just for, it's bad enough to get the camera on. <laughs> That's my hard work. No, you um, have like a proper, you know, I, do, I, I know this sounds like a basic kind of thing, but, you know, so many people go, oh, yeah, we've got a website, and you know, and you go like, oh, yeah, I'll go check it out. And you look at it and you're like, fucking hell. This is <laughs> yeah, you're like, this is barely a website. Right. Yeah, yeah. just like. So, and have you got your, 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 your computer? Can you go to the website? What is it called? Maybe I'm looking at it. I'm like, this oh, is a proper say. legit. I'm like, this yeah. is this yeah. is a proper legit. Tell us know, something. Website. Like, what, what does it sound? Give us some. Uh, we'll give us uh, some. So here we go. We've got uh, uh, top stories here. We've got new Deadpool f- uh, Deadpool film hires Molyneux sisters as writers. Is that Movie the expect that to be eight as, rated R. He dresses up as Spider Man or something. Is that that film? Well, he kind of has a red. I like this background as well. Sorry, again, we're just talking about something that people can't see. I can't even screen share my Skype or shit. The well, bed, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. For example, uh, updated Wonder Woman 1984 to have simultaneous release on HBO Max and in theatres. What's uh, um, is HBO Max like a paid subscription on Sky yeah, or something? It's, yeah, it's it's HBO's paid thing. It's yeah, only a new film. It's always a year old films, isn't it? Uh, no, they're Dave doing. Got- Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, you go. No, you go. I think we were both about to say the same yeah. thing about Jack's, about um, the Snyder cut of Justice yeah, League. Yeah, and just the fact that like it's only in America, so it's like it's yeah. no, it's um, bogus to us, really, isn't it? I was trying to find out that the the release of the the Godfather thing has been re released, and I wanted to yeah, find that. number three, isn't it? They've he's done a re he's done a recut yeah. of it. Coppola is this is. Um, oh, I thought that it was all three put together. I thought that was what. They no, were he's doing. done. Oh, what the. Um, because there was a version John, in fact, talked to us about it, didn't he? Uh, John, oh, that was um, it's our two film different critic, John things, Higgins. Yeah, it's two yeah so things. Yeah. Um, there was a TV version of uh, after the release of Godfather, The Godfather, and The Godfather Part Two. It's not called Godfather One, um, <laughs> but uh, um, they were released quite close together. I think two years apart, something like that, and. They released a version. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's something like the Godfather Saga or whatever. Or and it it was, I think, played over a you know the course of a work you know five days. Just um, the these two films cut together, slight alternate takes. Some scenes cut out. Some scenes added in that you know um, would, were cut from the theatrical releases of both. Um, so. But that's never been made available. I think you can just basically get it on bootlegs. Right. Um, but the um, but now Francis they've for- now they've done the the third just the third one's been really edited. yeah. So the the much maligned unfairly yeah. I think um, Godfather three. It's a good film. I just it's not yeah. as good as you know if if they slapped another name on it and just said this yeah, is a god yeah, this yeah. is a gangster film. I think people would have yeah. been much kinder to it. Um, but they're you know after long rumours. Um, he has cut together essentially a director's, you know, a, a, a much more substantive director's right. cut. What so, was the, um, who was the chick in there? Wasn't she like the kid? The chick. Uh, so so yeah, she was his daughter. Yeah. Sophia Coppola. Yeah. Oh, she, that's Sophia Coppola. See there. See, yeah. I didn't like her and I didn't know that. And I didn't uh, like her in the film. I, I think there was, uh, to me, I, I don't, it's not as bad as people. And I think there's a naivety in her performance that is kind of what the role is calls for uh, i just didn't like her i did not like her on camera i did something I should, about her i've only actually seen the first godfather movie it's just one of those ones that i watched it years ago and i just haven't bothered to watch the sequels and i really should 
Oh, they're great. You could. I, I, went, I went back and watched them again about three mm. years ago, and I thought, oh, these are really good films, man. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't, they never let you down. They never let you down. Uh, the third one I watched once, and I tried to watch it the second time. I thought, oh, this is so boring. Like it just feels like you're just. It's not a standalone film. You're just tying off ends here. Like I want to watch it and then watch a good film, not just this drip drip effect of just get to the end bit. Um, is that them done? There's no Godfather four. <laughs> Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought. I mean, well, um, never know. <laughs> part, pff, who knows? Yeah, exactly. I mean, at the end of spoiler alert again for a film that because that no, came out in the nineties. You're not having that. Five, yeah. Yeah, you, you can spoil the Godfather it. Part Three. Uh, Michael Corleone um, dies. I mean, he dies an old man. It it takes place quite a bit. It it, it does this weird flash forward to him then being an old man alone and he d- he drops out of his chair and dies. Oh, okay. Entirely possible you could make a film setting the end of... Oh, between that, You yeah. know, the main narrative and then that sudden flash forward. Um, yeah. Because it's not that the film doesn't end in a massacre. Um, his daughter's killed. Um, I suppose the implication is that after that he loses everything and the rest of his life doesn't matter. Hence but I think why. that's more coming up to modern times now, that would be, wouldn't it? So you wouldn't really have that sort of mafia mafia that was of the 60s and the 70s. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to set it. Um, it's, there's a very odd um, thing with time because the, um, the Godfather is filmed in the 70s, um, but set just after the First World War. I think yeah. it goes from... Uh, sorry, the Second First World War. Um you know, Michael returns home from the Second World War, a war hero, and I think it. I think the first. Uh, sorry, I think part two goes up to sort of the beginning of the of the nineteen fifties. Right. Um, Godfather three. You're like, when is this meant to be set? It it feels very much like it's set <laughs> yeah. in the nineties. You yeah. think, mm, well, there's a hundred by now. Yeah, the exactly. Black yeah. leather jackets. <laughs> so it's it's never quite consistent in that. Way. It's, and I find it very weird where. As time goes on, you get that weird thing where, especially like you said, like it's filmed in the past, mm. but then set even further in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I find it weird when you get to dates where it's been like longer since the film came out than them going back in time 30 years. Yeah. So you know how it's like Back to the Future. It's like it's been longer since Back to the Future was released than the 30 <laughs> years they go back to 1955, like, which just messes with my brain. Yeah, mm. well, the, we all know the future lied to us. That 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 floating skateboard that is basically the, the the thing that everybody comments on about the future. Where was that floating skateboard from Back to the Future? <laughs> I want my self lacing shoes. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Well, did they not sort of have those? Wasn't there Reebok shoes where you twisted the thing and they tightened up? I think yeah, they were Reebok. Um, I'm not sure. Probably. I've seen videos where like there's been videos with like Michael J. Fox and with Christopher Lloyd and stuff, and where they there is self lacing shoes. I think they're just too expensive to. Mass yeah. producer at the moment. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Um, right, well, there you go. That's uh, episode 95 of the podcast. Uh, Andrew, before we go, what's that picture you've got in the background? Is that like a, a Marvel Oh, can picture? you see me now? No, I can't, I could, but I can oh. see the picture. Uh, there was a Marvel, um, it's a poster, it's Civil War. So I'm in my, oh, wow. I'm in our, in our living room um, because uh, my housemate isn't here. So I thought I'll okay. be downstairs. And What's the, is that obviously moving out? That's all the boxes. Yeah. Is yeah, that, he started, that... we're not moving out for... Another uh, twenty something day, twenty five days, but he started yeah. packing now. Classic. That, that's not an is exercise it? ball, is it? Yeah, it is he sits on that? Yeah, Sang Sang middle class. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's the show, right? So, um, uh, that's it. So, thank you, Alex, for stepping in at the last moment to cover Charles. Indeed. Hopefully, you'll be back no next problem. week. Um, thank you very much. So that's episode ninety five, and we will be back probably with Zoom next week. So that's something to look forward. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, put that in your fucking if you've diaries. Got, if you've yeah. nothing else. If, if you're homeless and there's nothing else going on, <laughs> it's, it's a highlight. All our homeless uh, podcast listeners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So that's it. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Right. We'll see you next week. Ciao. Cheers, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.